Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode today of the new Survivor series that I've created. In this series I'm going to be producing weapons, armor, costumes, all sorts of different things that you would typically see in something along the lines of a zombie apocalypse, end of the world kind of thing. Today's first episode we're going to be showing off the concealed carry Jewel Fiskars X7 hatchet? Yeah. Um, this is a leather strap rig. It's been made so that you can alter what fittings go on the back and on the sides. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Though this may look really functional, and it is, it's designed purely for fantasy. For short films, miniseries, photo shoots, that kind of stuff. It's not actually intended for concealed carry. Uh, anything with malicious intent, none of that. It's not the biscuit. This is just for fun, it's a little bit silly, a little bit sexy. Now, though this may look super practical and uh, fit for purpose, it's purely made for fantasy. Very much like the Assassin's Creed Hidden Blade that I designed. Purely for fun, it's not for real life application. These are a 3D printed design using a thumb release tab. And out she goes. It's as simple as that. Um, these are a nifty little axe, which is what I actually designed these around. They won't really work with any other type of hatchet. Um, I didn't design it to have two of them set up on the same rig. The plan was to have the hatchet and say like a, a mid pack or a gun or something like that. Something that would be more practical in an apocalypse setting. The leather belting, this is may look like it's some quality seam work, but these are actually just some cheap belts purchased from the local Khemar, which is the New Zealand equivalent of Walmart, I guess you could say. Back plate, super generic, simple plate, but the way that it's been designed is that later on I'll be able to have other attachments that can be fitted to it instead, making it a more all-rounded kind of system. Is that really it? I think that's really it. It's, it's a holster for an axe. There's nothing more I can go into. Here's how to build your own. To complete this project, as you see in the video, you'll need a couple of leather belts, two mirrored axe sheaths, the locking catches, four of the belt melting plates, some M3 brass inserts, a couple of 20mm and a bunch of 6mm M3 bolts. And lastly the two part back mounting plate. These parts were all printed on the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon using tree supports. I highly recommend doing the same as they're much easier to remove. Once you've gotten all your parts cleaned up, do a dry fit just to ensure that the locking mechanism is functioning. You don't want this thing to let go of the hatchet mid-movement. Once you've gotten all of these pieces fitted together like you can see in the video, you can move on to fixings and fastenings. First we're going to attach the locking catch to the main assembly using the 20mm M3 bolt. This doesn't need a thread insert as it loosely catches on the inside of the sheath. Screw that all the way in with the countersunk side of the catch on the same side as your belt loop. If you're finding that the catch is a little bit too difficult to open and close, you may find that there are a couple of supports still stuck in between the gaps of the catch. At this stage you can take a moment to just check that your axe fits nicely and securely locks into position before moving on to working with any of the leather belts. The back brace for the assembly was printed on a very uncalibrated end of three, so it's a little bit ugly compared to the rest. I'm taking my brass M3 thread inserts and inserting them from the outside face of the belt catches and using my soldering iron, just gently melting them into position. This is gonna give the M3 threaded bolts something nice and secure to screw to that isn't gonna strip easily like basic plastic. The back plate you can simply use five thread inserts, you don't have to fill all of the holes. Just one for each belt and one in the centre should be plenty. When it comes to cutting your belts to fit all the plates, you can generally eyeball it. What I preferred to do was actually line the inside of the plate with a white pencil. This allowed me to gently rub the belt and the plate together and it would transfer exactly where I needed to do my hole punching and my cutting. Though you could cut the holes for this using a pair of scissors or a scalpel, I'd highly suggest using a hole punch. The one that I'm using here is about 10 years old and it's as dull as you could possibly get. So I just threw it in my drill to burn its way through these premium Chinese made synthetic leather belts. Once you've done that, you can do the same thing for the back mount. Before starting your assembly process, I would recommend that you attach the belts to the holster first 
And while you hold the holster under your arm where you would like for it to sit, have a second person fold them over your shoulder, under your rib, and cross them over in line with your spine as you feel it would be most comfortable. And using that white pencil, mark the center line where they cross over each other. This is where you'll cut them to have them then lock into the back brace. Now when lining up your final belts, unless you are built like Snorlax, the bottom belt should be the shortest belt. So line this up so that it pokes into the front of your sheath, pop your belt plate over the top, and then fix two of your 6mm M3 bolts through the inside of the sheath. Once you've added both the screws to this bottom belt to secure it, simply fold it over, Fold the top belt and repeat the same process as you did with the lower belt. In this one you can see I poked the belt beyond where it's meant to sit and I fitted the plate over the top. As I had a little bit of difficulty which you didn't see off camera with the previous one, this secured it nice and flat to place and the final two screws for this side of the sheath are done. If you're wanting to do the sheath on both sides of this holster, simply rinse and repeat. Thank you for watching everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's not a big elaborate crazy project like some of my hidden blades or my gun stocks that I've made in the past. It's just something simple and easy. If you would like to 3D print your own one of these sheaths or any of my other digital products, head to my Etsy or my Colts 3D page found in the description below. In addition to that, a large amount of you that have seen my videos don't follow me. And this is fine, it's just a bit weird. <laughs> so, if you want to help my channel grow and help me to be able to produce more content like this, just click the subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and then anytime that I have a new project that'll come up, you'll be the first people to know about it. If you want to support future projects, please feel free to have a look at my Patreon and consider becoming one of the first people to support me through that. That would mean a lot. Uh, and if you do purchase any of my digital products for 3D printing, in the text readme file that is included in all of them is a link to my private Discord where I will show my future projects that I'm working on. In addition to that, I'll give helpful tips and tricks to anybody who's building my projects and having some trouble. That's all for now, everybody. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.